Hey, hey, what's going on, everybody? It's your boy AD, and that's all day, and I'm in the spot. You already know what's up. You already know what's good. I'm in here today. We're doing a little interview today with MGTOW Edder Monk, a.k.a. Seafood Black Irish. And you know how we do. We're going to give it a little time. What's up, MGTOW Thread? Good to see you in here, man. What's happening, MGTOW Thread? But, um, yeah. You know, I'm going to play a little music, give a little time for some people to come in, and we're going to get this show on the road for tonight. So let me go ahead and do my thing. What's going on? What's happening out here? What's up with the people? How y'all doing today on this Tuesday, September 15th? We halfway through this month already. Can y'all believe it? Already. So we almost at the end of 2020 already, which is crazy in my honest opinion. Just crazy how fast this summer kind of did kind of fly by. But we keeping things rolling. We keeping things going. I'm up in here. You know what I'm saying? So I do got some more interviews just to let y'all know that I do plan on doing and lining up. You know, I'm just taking a little break, a little break. You know, I got other things to do in my personal life, you know, and then sometimes I do like to hop on, you know, do the little chats. But I do plan on making some other like normal videos and also trying to continue the interviews as well. Because, again, I love doing the interviews. I love getting to know these people and for us to just, you know, get to look at them and get to know them a little better, especially if people don't know them like that. And I find that to be a really cool thing. So, yeah, so just know I'm going to still be playing in that. And, again, come, you know, bringing back my other videos, too. What's up, Dre? What's going on? Hey, time for show number 10. Let's go. Yes, this is number 10 right here. This is this is number 10, yo. I know 10 and it, it happened so quick. I think I'm trying to think when was my first stream yard. I think my first stream yard was a month ago. It might exactly, you know what? Actually, it was the ninth. I remember now because I, I remember when they was like, oh yeah, you using your data mysteriously kind. What's going on, man? What's happening mysteriously? I seen that. I seen that new video you put out. What's going on, bro? Let me take a little sip. I'm taking a little sip of my cup. This is my first cup, so it's not gonna be me all litty like I do in my last my late night streams. I do be kind of litty though, but I'm I'm cool right now. I'm good. This is my little so I'm pretty sober right now, but it's all good because you know I gotta get up into that zone, you know. He said, not much, not much. Yeah, man, just chilling, man. Good to see you, Mysteriously. Good to see you, man. We out here. We out here. We trying to, you know, do this interview real quick. You know, we just being a little patient and whatnot, like how we always be. I know. <laughs> I was really like, yeah, Mysteriously Kyle. Like, yeah, oh, okay. Lonely said, I'm here listening, but at work. Okay, good to see you, Lonely. Good to see you here. All right, he's here. I'm going to drop the link. Uh, Elder Monk, good to see you 
So hold on, let me drop this link. for a little second. Here you go, Lonely. I'll leave it in the lab. That got a link right there for this beat. Did he get it? I seen him say something about his laptop, not giving him an update. I left the link though, so let's see what happens. He probably he probably getting ready right now. Hell, all he said, them flutes go hard. <laughs> them flutes are hard, hell yeah, them flutes banging. Ah, <laughs> oh, thanks. Thanks, Lonely. Oh, Lord. <laughs> oh, man. Oh man. Okay. All right. That be that. Yeah. Don't flutes. Don't flutes go hard though. Dude. <laughs> I damn near want to imitate it right now. But um, yeah. Uh, we just seen him. So I think he's trying to get his laptop together because he was here. He said something about an update. So let's hope he can jump in. Let me uh try leaving the link again, just in case. Yo, we just seen him. Yeah, that beat is nice. I like that beat. That's J-Rock right there. J-Rock, you know. J-Rock, he keep that heat. He keep that heat on deck. He keep that heat a box. <laughs> he keep that dank. <laughs> he keep that business. He keep that heat. Okay. Okay, so again, just being patient as usual, you know, patiently waiting, because I know he's probably here, I know it's something, you know, that's how I be sometimes, sometimes you trying to get in, or you trying to do something, and something come up, that happens sometimes too, like, even with me, even with me, like, oh man, I got to start this stream, oh shit, this comes up, now I got to do this real quick, and it'll slow me down a little bit. But, you know, you want to hurry up and get it done so you can come back and you can come chill and be ready for the stream. Huh? His whole check buying blank a diamond ring. Oh, my God. Why you go at it? Um, mysteriously, are you sure that's not what you want to do? You you going in all lonely. Mysteriously, like, <laughs> I'm just laughing. You know, I'm just laughing at that. Donald, number one, where's the old art? Uh, what old art? Which one? Because I got a lot. Are you talking about, like, my backgrounds and stuff? Damn, why he say, why he say, oh, why is he saying that? 
Oh my gosh. Hey. Sorry about Sorry the delay. I'm, I'm sitting here with my laptop here in my lap on the porch. I keep uh -huh. refreshing. I don't see shit. I look at my phone. It's like, oh shit, there he is. Then my other laptop didn't work, so I had to switch. Why? But, hey. but I'm here now. But remember, quality is worth waiting for. Yes, it is. Always quality over quality. <laughs> Always. Alrighty. So, Ed, so this is your show, bro. Let let's get after it. Yeah, man. You know, I'm happy to have you here. You know, Mix How Elder Monk. I know I was trying to get to you not too long ago, but I'm happy you made it. I'm happy because you know I was talking to you earlier. I know you said you had some business you had to handle earlier. Oh yeah, I'm still moving forward. And you know, it doesn't matter if snails are lapping you as long as you're facing the right direction. Mm -hmm. It's like I, I still don't have my RV rescued. It's uh, sitting on the side of the road in danger of getting towed any moment now. But I got a new starter on it. My roommate gave me the homie hookup. 25 oh. bucks. Oh, yeah. That's what's up. That's a homie hookup right there. Yep. So I went up there and look. finally got it installed, and now the batteries are too weak. Oh, my God. Well, the, the shell is a mess, but everything inside is usable. And, you know, think outside the box. One of my plans for the future is to just take the shell off, put on a cab and a flatbed. Now i got a, a truck that will haul anything. Right. It's got a 454 Chevy engine in it and a dually rear end which is like a, a one ton equivalent so there you go yeah man and again it's definitely good to see you man and i'm actually happy i'm happy that you're here let's keep this you know this stuff going because i actually did want to do an interview with you i did because i wanted to you know get to know you a little bit better because i saw right. you, i've been knowing you for well, a little while but not too too long well you know i i have uh Tico Trend and MGTOW absolute knowledge for you even knowing about me. Mm -hmm. I was able to hang out in a couple of his live streams and just kick it old school. Mm -hmm. And it was one of the things that helped me make my, my latest breakthrough. You know, being around people where I could relax and laugh. I haven't had a good laugh in a long time and it, it did help. I agree. I agree. You know so, what? And uh, you know Baron Yam. Mm -hmm. No, I'm not. I'm not picking on him, but I guess he's been peeking at my work. But it, I, I'm so out there, a lot of people don't get me. So he he heard me in the live stream, and he was like, "Damn, I underestimated you." Mm -hmm. Well, no shit. <laughs> people been doing that for fifty years, Junior. <laughs> so it. It don't upset me, and I'm not gloating. I'm just yeah, it happens all the time. So right. let, me, let me stop babbling, and you ask some questions. Okay. Um. So the first thing I really wanted to ask you really was like, you know, how how was things coming up as a younger man? Like, how were things like with women and stuff today? And how were things when you were coming up and in your area? Okay. I, I would say, well, I was born in 1956. Uh -huh. So I I was born right on the, the tail end of classical American culture. You know, back when a handshake was, was ironclad. Uh -huh. And for the most part, people stayed in their lane. Now, I, I I do need to say right right from the jump. Mm -hmm. I I may be talking harsh about women as I proceed, but there there is no hate in my heart for women at all. Just a profound indifference for them as women. I treat them as human beings. There there is no is no hanky panky going on. Yes, I totally understand. So what you're doing, bro. 
when, when appropriate, I, I'll, uh, I'll tell you a little about the nun. Okay. So, you know, I, I was raised Southern Tradcon. Now, I grew up in, now where did I put that damn thing? I grew up in Buffalo, New York. Oh, wow. But both of my parents were from South Carolina. Hmm. So it was like, you bet your ass you're going to church. <laughs> with, with, with the grandparents, the parents weren't into it too much because they worked so much. Now, you you heard about latchkey kids? No, I never heard of that. Oh, that that was uh, later on in the uh, in the 80s and 90s when both parents were working and the kids would come home from school to an empty house. Oh, wow. Nah, I, didn't I, was, I was doing that back in the 70s. Wow. At what age? Oh, uh, in 1970, I was 14. Wow. Now, now, you know how modern culture is weaponized against men. Yes. You know, it's like the, the moment the moment she pushes you over a line, she's got 911 on speed dial. <laughs> and usually you get the bracelets and go to jail. Yes. Now, I saw the exact same pattern going on in the black community when I was a teenager in the 60s and 70s. Mm -hmm. And... And uh, well, you know there there are a lot of historical reasons for that, right? You no. Know, now, black men, you know, once you're in the in the the justice system, a lot of times you lose your right to vote. Mm -hmm. So, what they would usually do is send a pretty boy around around election time to make the women get get a wet spot in the panties oh i'm gonna vote for him <laughs> <laughs> kind of like uh Ad, adam clayton powell oh wow he was bona fide but but he he was a fly mofo <laughs> I, mean, yeah. I, so, uh, now, I i grew up as an only child okay which was which was no fun and I learned real quick, there ain't nothing good going on the street at two in the morning. Mm -hmm. As an example, here is the Buffalo Gang Recruitment Program, 1970. There you are, standing there, sitting at the bus stop, or just waiting to cross the street. All of a sudden, a bunch of them roll up on you. It could be the Mad Dogs could be the the matadors whoa uh 49ers mm. and uh hey you're gonna join our gang uh no bang damn yeah yeah so i heard that shit i made a decision right then to keep my narrow black ass <laughs> off the street <laughs> yes <laughs> i feel now, you. Now I I will readily admit street cred that uh, negative mm -hmm. never had street cred, but I didn't have the new no bob and weave against the fucking tech nine neither. Right. So, so it balanced out. And now that I got to throw this in before I forget, mm -hmm. but it, this is just a reminder how you may be being blessed and you don't know it. So. There I am, way early, uh, educated lame. That That's the right term? <laughs> educated lame. <laughs> yes. Yes, that, that was me. But, and, hey, I, I was a pathfinder even back in the day. Mm -hmm. So I finally meet up with my real family. And I'm looking at my uh, Aunt Lula's wedding album. Mm-hmm. And I'm seeing all, all these new relatives, you know, but most of them I recognize now because I, I was at my mom's funeral. And then there's the group picture. And I almost snapped my neck doing a double take. 
what the fuck am I doing in this picture? What? And I'm like, what? And so I asked Aunt Lula, how could I be in this picture? She says, oh, no, that's your brother, Don. And we were identical. What? And, and he ran the streets back in the day. Mm. So if I would have been out there, I could have been double tapped for some of his bullshit. Because they oh yeah, Don, you're who? That, yeah, motherfucker, we know who you are. Bam, bam. <laughs> I'd, I'd be done. Right. So now I, I am I am not your average example. Now, uh, back in the day, we lived close to downtown. You know, little one lane street sandwiched between two fast two lane streets mm -hmm. and at the foot of the expressway. So it was great, man. You know, we got to do all the, the neighborhood shit, but we were suddenly uprooted. Everybody had to leave. And I end up, we end up moving, being the first black family in the, in the new neighborhood. Wow. It was a, uh, October 24th, 1968, mm -hmm. I was 12 years old. So not only am I the only colored boy in the neighborhood, I'm also the oldest by two years. Wow. And that's a pattern that stuck with me all my life. Mm. I'd say a good 85% of the time, I am the oldest person there. Mm -hmm. Just the way it happened. Right, that's oh. a crazy history. That's crazy how like it got to the point that you're talking now. Like, wow, that's a that's a build up indeed. So now here I am. Now I, I'm surrounded by all white people in the neighborhood. There are a few black faces around the school, but here I am. The hormones are starting to go out of control. <laughs> I'm painfully shy. I'm socially inept. It's like, oh, recipe for disaster. And then the, the capper. June 30th, 1970. Mm -hmm. Now, now remember, kids. Now, you, you hear how, how long ago that was. If this is a pivotal moment in your history, you should remember. Right. It was the first time I ever rode a 10 speed. And I broke my leg. What? I did a head-on collision with a car. Oh, my. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. It was moving. It's, oh, yes. So, so naturally, I tried to hit the brakes, and and I hit the coaster brake. Oh, shit. F forget all about the hand brakes, and uh, there's the car. Bam. Whoa. So I, do a, so I do a somersault over the car. Damn. And land plant. Land flat on my back. And I'm stunned. <laughs> and finally, I, I start to feel a little better. It says, oh, okay. Well, let me try to get up. Uh, wrong move. <laughs> now my leg hurts. So I spend a miserable summer in a cast. And with the given a shoe with a built up an inch and a half because one leg is now shorter than the other. It's like, I wore them once and then threw them away. Like the hell with that. So I'm trying to hang out with the black girls and they're ca calling me a, a little bitch. Cause I don't hang out on the streets. Wow. And well, you know, literature, chess and war games are not, on the average person's uh, action list. Mm -hmm. And of course, because I walked with a limp after that, and I refused to, to use a cane, they called me cripple. So I was like, oh, okay. Yeah, that's wild right there. That is, that's wild. So, like, I've seen one of my friends uh, ran into a car that was parked and it messed him up. So you said that mother was moving. So I know it was serious. So that, that was just one of the first of my many brushes with death. 
Mm. I, I could have been dead many times over. That's why I do my Johnny Appleseed on crack routine mm -hmm. now. <laughs> because I'm still here to do it. Yeah. So, so now here I am. I, I go to college. But instead of studying engineering like I'm supposed to, I'm chasing girls and drinking too much beer. You know how that goes. Mm -hmm. Now, that, now this brings up education. Yeah, I was just going to ask that. It was a shock to me. Well, I, I did good in subjects I like. They're like uh, physics, math. Got uh, ran like a ninety. English grammar. 70. Oh, that's cool. Well, you know how it goes. So I, I go to college and it was uh, a shock because you don't have that teacher being paid to motivate you. If you're in college, they don't give a fuck. They already got your money. You want to waste your time partying, that's your ass. Mm -hmm. So you have to remember to, to motivate yourself. Yeah, because so, you can get distracted easily. So uh, it reminds me of one other thing before we advance the timeline. Mm -hmm. Parental discipline. Now, my my mom was extremely strict. Now, I know, of course, maybe some of y'all kids remember somebody getting it with the switch. Yep. Especially the one you got yourself. Uh-huh. How about getting it with a switch from a rose bush? Oh my goodness. Rose bush oh, belt. Man. But one of her favorites was the the dead cord from an old iron. Oh it had this really thick asbestos insulation around it. And she oh, just doubled that thing up. And it's like the hell with the belt, man. Tear my ass up with that shit. Yeah, I grew up like that too. I did grow up getting disciplined. Like now, the of time it was now the that, best, it came. Now that's a little extreme, but you know, I, I never had to use anything because see the, these hands are plenty big enough to give a spanking. Mm -hmm. that, that's all you need to do. If you're drawing blood, something's wrong with you. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, yeah you and now, after my son was 12, I stopped spanking him because it wasn't doing any good. I had to, you know, work smarter, not harder. Mm -hmm. So now you know that it, it's a popular thing to ground kids from their stuff. But remember, out of sight, out of mind. So here's what you do. You make them pack up all their shit and put it in a clear container that sits right in their room. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And all taped up so they can't just pop it open and grab something. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah, yeah, they got to look at that shit all the time. Yeah, ground them from all their electronics for a week and put it in a big box taped right to their dresser where they can't do shit with it, but they can see it. Yeah, discipline is, is key. That it is key. And it's not for pleasure unless you're a dumbass. Right. Now, that, uh, I'm not endorsing any specific technique, but it's just like the man said back in the day, you know, you got to, uh, actually it was my, my stepdad's grandfather. He got a stubborn mule to move by biting off part of its ear. Whoa. And then when he asked grandpa why he do it, he says, well, He's being a little absent-minded lately. I just had to get his attention. Damn. He said a part of his ear. Yep. Oh, my gosh. Now, that, now that I've never experienced right there. No shit. <laughs> so, so here I am. I'm going to school, but I, but I fuck up, and I end up flunking out. Oh, wow. And and mom says, you're not laying around here. You're going to get a job or else. And I did a good thing and a bad thing. Instead of thinking and joining the Air Force, which, which is the best deal as far as residents and such, 
I joined the Marines. No, I don't regret joining. Because, you know, I, I have my own brand of patriotism. And I did sign that blank check. Oh, and by the way, Antifa, my oath of enlistment has not expired. So you don't want none of this, okay? But How I digress. Now, the, the military used to be a good option. Well, maybe it is now. But when I joined, they, they made a lot of changes to the classic GI Bill. So a lot of us were in, in that bubble where we missed out on the good stuff. But it's like everything else. You know, you uh, you, you got to have a plan before you go. And things don't always work out. But you, you got to take advantage of your opportunities while you can. Did you have any and, good friends while you were in there? What's that? I said, did you have any good friends while you were in there? Oh, yeah, man. Oh, good shit. Oh, let's see. Now, I, I've been shaking hands with Mr. Green since 1976. Mm. So I got I got caught when I was in the Marines. I was a bad boy. <laughs> and as punishment, they sent me away to a ma trailer maintenance shop. I was just not doing well in that environment. So they shuffled me off to the admin office. Oh, wow. And, and there, I, I thrived. I was the correspondence clerk. I typed everything. Mm. I had my own uh, computer. It was, a, it was a hokey one. But nobody bothered me, man. It's like I, I could just work at my own pace. Sounds and very, very rarely did I have to do other stuff. So what was supposed to be a six-month punishment detail turned dude into a year and a half because I made myself indispensable. Mm. Now, there, the other side of that coin is if you are the one person that has that bit of information about some system that has to work or everybody's in trouble, you may never get promoted. So That's keep that in mind, too. Like we can't promote you. You got to stay here to, to to work with the, you know, Mister Know It All here. Mm -hmm. So you never know. So uh, there were a bunch of us, man. We we would we would uh, play Traveler, a, a role playing game like D and D together. That's cool. And and one of the guys had base housing just a few blocks away. Mm. And we had a hardcore lunch, man. We would have lunch like from 11 or 11.30 till 1 if you weren't duty section. Wow. A hardcore lunch. Yeah. So we would go over to this guy's house. Like, it'd be like six or seven of us. Crack the six pack and start rolling blunts, baby. <laughs> Then we go back and, and pretend to work in the afternoon. Now, we'd only do this if we knew the officers would be gone. Because we got the, the squadron CO and the XO, you know, right next door, you know, from our big room. Right. But it was nice, man. That's cool. That's definitely cool, though. I'm happy to hear that from you, you know, to hear your take on it and your experience. And I'm happy that they actually, like I, like you said, there was some issues, but it's cool that you actually found the place that you could work with. Mm-hmm. So, uh, taking advantage of your opportunities. So I go and I go and enlist and they tell me at first that I'm going to go be a, a teletype operator and repairman. Mm -hmm. I said, well, you know, that's cool. You know, they still have them in the new studios, Western Union. I got a place to work after I get out. And they say I'm going to go to 29 Palms, California. That, 
out there in the middle of nowhere near Camp Pendleton. Are you mm. familiar with Camp California? Um, no, I'm not that much. I've never heard of that oh. area. It's it's way down south, uh, not quite to the border, but you know, in in a nasty zone. Mm. There, there's just not a lot there but desert and stumps. But I end up going to Memphis first for training. And here I ran into a different school environment. This was self-directed instruction. They'd give you the book, teach you the principle. And there were proctors up there that would answer your questions like a regular teacher. But they didn't give a fuck, man. Uh, you had six hours a day. And they didn't care. You know, I mean, they check on you if you're taking too long, but you could take as long as you wanted. You could take whatever breaks you wanted and take the test whenever you felt like you were ready. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. With a swerve. A, sw a swerve. A swerve. What's that? You had to get a hundred on the test to proceed. Uh. Period. Period. Dang, a hundred. You said no, no mistakes, no mistakes. That was serious, though, but that's understandable. That would encourage you to get it done. Like, I understand, like, okay, they let y'all have y'all time, but at the end of the day, you better have your stuff together. At the that's end right. Of yeah, you know. And that again, that's 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 super cool though, you know, because I again I've never been to California ever. I've never been to Memphis. I never been to a lot of these places that you're speaking about. So it, again, it's definitely interesting how you actually have traveled to a lot through your time. Yes. So let's see. Where were we? Okay, so I uh I went into boot camp on my stepfather's birthday, April twenty fifth, nineteen seventy seven. He happens to uh, have grown up in or near Memphis. And he still had some relatives down there. So I go to boot camp at Paris Island. Now, have you ever watched Full Metal Jacket? Uh, let me see. The anime. Oh, right? no, don't tell me you have not watched Full Metal Jacket. It's so, it sounds so familiar. I know I've probably seen it, but I, if I did see it, it was, it's just something I probably watched maybe once or twice. Ah, well, you, back in my mind, too. Okay, you got you to gotta check it out. Now, the uh, they did not put hands on me like the drill instructor does in the movie, mm -hmm. but all the, the verbiage and the psychological abuse, it is point fucking on. Wow. You don't know, like the man said, you don't know whether to shit or go blind. Man. You, you are all fucked up. Mm. And that, yeah, you're, you're in his little world. And believe me, that the moment they roll up and get on that bus, and get you out on them little yellow footprints, you're like saying, what the fuck did I get myself into? i never been to boot camp, but I heard that's what they do, right? They try to break you down before they build you up. Exactly. So, I go to I go to Naval Air Station, Millington. Mm. I don't know the exact ratio, but the sailors outnumbered the Marines about 10 to 1. Okay. So this is where everybody that works in the aviation part goes to get their initial training. So I did three separate classes. Uh, A-Fun-P, Aviation Fundamentals. This is a wrench. This is a screwdriver. No shit. <laughs> then B, E, and E Basic electricity and electronics Then I did let's see ABA Aviation uh, Aviation electronics course And all of these are The same way Multiple modules Get a hundred or else Now 
Unfortunately, I have a, a friend who was my roommate. The, the system fucked up, and these dumbasses were too proud to admit it. Oh, so he, he goes and takes the test. He gets one wrong. So he, he figures, well, uh, they don't give him the exact question, but they give him a hint as to the type of question. And he says, well, maybe they mean this one. And he he shows his deal. He says, yeah, you know what you're doing. Uh, they go back. He does the test again, fails the same question. This time, uh, they, they don't bother to investigate. They just give him the boot from the program. Later on, they found out the computer error, but they wouldn't let him back in. How's that for some shit? Yeah, that's messed up. That's how, yeah, that's strict. That's what I call strict right there. Damn, and they wouldn't even so, let him come back. Did he so try? Now, so now it's about, oh, let's say I showed up at Millington two days before Elvis died. Mm. And now it's getting on to Christmas. And I hear about this program. Wow, this sounds crazy. Before you even start the program, they want you to, to commit to an extra two years of service. Whoa. And imagine school, one room, one teacher, eight hours a day, Monday through Friday. That sounds like hell. And uh, now that that's just the first module, but I'll get there. Now, you got to make the commitment. The program is six months long. Mm. But if you survive, and assuming you don't fuck up too bad, <laughs> you will be promoted to E4. What's E4? Uh, that... That means you're a NCO rank or a non-commissioned officer. You're, you know, you're one step above the shit storm on the ground. Mm. You know, it's just like being a foreman. That just means you get the shit in your face first. Pretty much. Right. And I want to know too. Oh, I want to know like yeah. how how this led into you know into the MGTOW philosophy because I know you get into that part. I know you're getting there. Okay, so I signed up for the program, and I did it. I ended up number three out of, oh, so remember the one teacher, one rule, uh, one, one big class, eight hours a day, right? Mm -hmm. That was the first month, and they, they wanted to weed people out, so they threw math at everybody. We lost half the people that month. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. Damn. Man. So, so we we went through courses on, uh, see, we did the math. Then we did another basic electricity course. Then an advanced course. Uh, one on radar. Uh, and one on troubleshooting. And a final exam. Mm. So I got a final score of 85. And I, I got a... I was number three out of 13 people. Out of that class of 50. That's pretty good. Number three. So, so you know, here... So we'll we'll leave the rest of that behind. I spent more time in, but now we'll get into the social stuff. I know you butterflies want to hear. <laughs> so I was tradcon and uh, tired of being alone. So I ended up getting married to a woman I barely knew. Mm. Uh, literally, in 1981, she saw me. At the Mormon church on Memorial Day weekend. And we got married on the 4th of July. Oh, wow. Now, now I, 
I put it this way, you know, I, I was one of those believers in romance because it, it was enjoyable and it gave me a lot of fulfillment to do that kind of chivalric stuff. Mm -hmm. Because a, a gentleman will do stuff like that, not because you're weak, but because you're valuable and worthy of respect. Right. You know, patriarchy does have some issues, but remember, a wise steward treats a valuable possession with care. Mm -hmm. So I thought I got lucky and I got, well, what I actually got was a trad thought. Are, are you saying, huh, what? Yeah, I'm listening. I'm listening. What's going on? Oh, I was just wondering if you knew what that term meant. You said a trad thought? Yes. Um, what's a trad thought? That is someone who pretends to be churchy, but go across the state line and Soul Train is running down the street. <laughs> back, back, back home, she won't even fart in your presence. <laughs> okay. so, so there I am, you know, I watch my I watch my parents and their in-laws grow up. And I swear to God, if you had handed them a knife, someone's throat would have been cut right then. You handed them a gun, somebody would have been double tapped right then. Whoa. You know, they, they would get that twisted off. But despite all that, it took a lot for them to leave forever. Mm. You know, I've seen, you know, seen people do the same shit do people do now. But, you know, they made it work. So that's what I tried to do. Unfortunately, you know, karma is giving me the pimp hand <laughs> because now not only out of five sisters, do I marry the only one that can't carry a baby to term? Mm. She's an unmedicated psychotic control freak. Whoa. She treated every minor disturbance in the forest as if it was a full scale disaster, mm. which usually involved screaming throwing stuff and blaming me. Mm. And you know, the thing with Tradcon culture, you know, at, you've got the same uh, thing as feminists do, you know, like you need to sacrifice and get out of the way for the women. Well, you know, Tradcon culture encourages leadership, but they also throw the sacrifice right on there too. Mm. And I spent all those years being a cheerleader and after things went sour, hanging around partly so I didn't have to pay child support and partly so my son didn't take all the abuse by himself. Mm. Because if I had gotten divorced early, I know she would have gotten full custody. Wow. So, That's something else. So I ended up... I ended up being married for 32 years. Mm -hmm. The last six and a half years with no sex and practically no physical contact. Mm. See, this is why people need to hear this. Because a lot of people out there have never been married like me. I've never been married before. And I know some other people haven't either. So that's why it's good to hear Cause it's a, I mean, that's serious, you know, it's serious. Oh, so, made me want to light some up now. <laughs> yeah. I'm, this is a, a little glass one hitter. Uh -huh. and, and I, I call it my crack pipe. <laughs> this, this little thing is, uh, this is better than any pipe. <laughs> so I'm good. I got one hitter too, but I, uh, <laughs> it's smaller than that. Oh, it's smaller. <laughs> yeah. Uh huh. Yeah. Yeah, buddy. Yeah, buddy. Let's get it. Okay. Yeah. Now, I know all y'all are pointing and laughing at the old guy. <laughs> now, see, it don't bother me. <laughs> I've taken more than one standing eight count, and I have tapped out a time or two from Mr. Green. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't know. Hey, you know, ain't afraid to admit it. Besides, besides, I I don't I don't mess with the lightweight stuff. I'm puffing on some chronic Kush. 
25%, and it's indica. Mm. There are lots of strains out there. You got to do your research and pay attention when you puff and see what works for you. Yeah, hell yeah. That sounds interesting right there, you know. I, oh. So, so uh, I, you know, I there I am trying to make it work. And I'm constantly hearing the problems are all my fault. And even the tough, the couple times when she threw me a bone saying, what do I need to change? Well, I'm so, you know, I, I'm punch drunk now. Mm-hmm. That's mentally. Long. And, uh, you know, I, I can't come up with anything harsh. And, you know, and the, the thing is, I, I did not pay attention, you know, because I was so heavily programmed. Yeah, because that, that's what I saw. You know, you have issues, but you work through them. Right. But it's hard to work through issues with somebody that enjoys the fighting. Right. And, and also, too, and, like, when it's difficult. Yeah. And they were one of the things she'd like to do is uh, I noticed after a while, you know, if I made one solid point in favor of my opinion, the focus of the argument would suddenly change. Mm. Whoa, whoa, wait a minute. We're now three subjects away and we haven't even settled this yet. And no, it never got settled. <laughs> yeah, it, it was not good. So how so, did you turn out right towards the end? How did I turn out what? I say, how did things turn out towards the end of, you know, the whole marriage? Oh, that, that was it. We have, we kind of had an uneasy truce. We we're trying to keep our son from spinning out of control, so we became the flock house for all the the crack pipe hitters for a while. Mm -hmm. Well, actually, it was meth with him. Wow! Now you you may be surprised, but yeah, the old Irish fella has done meth. Mm. And I tell you. I wasn't impressed. <laughs> you said you said it was whack. It was whack. You can get the same thing. Just chug some energy shots, and oh. you're good to go. Yeah, don't don't waste your money. Right. Says, because uh, I guess the the big attraction was getting the tingles. Mm -hmm. I barely got the tingles once. And my friend said, "Well, this batch is weak, but I got a better source." elsewhere and we went hit it some more i was like yeah you know i'm awake but so yeah no, I, I i did do speed back in the day uh, ask somebody old school about black beauties what's that what's black beauties old school speed man like because i've done like honestly i'm just me like overall i just smoke i drink but in my past i have done some things before too but me yeah. it, was like, it was like i did it just to try it but i just left it alone after that like once i seen what it was about like speed i never done speed but i did like ecstasy i've done that and some other little things but it was just i don't know i was young and i just wanted to see what it was about you know because you know, people, especially when you're around. Oh, you have to. If, if, if I may, uh, the, the hamster wheel is always spinning. When it stops on a subject, I got to jump on it before it disappears. Mm -hmm. Now, yes, it, what you bring up is very important because you need to alter your perceptions and sometimes look at things just a little different differently. Yeah. There was a book written in the 60s called The Electric Kool-Aid Acid Test. Whoa. And it talked about the early LSD pioneers like Timothy Leary and such. Mm. And they did their early version of the rave back in the day. And the electric Kool-Aid was what had the acid in it. And not only did they do their best to try to do a... Uh, a visual recreation of the acid experience for those people that didn't want to partake. 
Mm-hmm. Every one of them raggedy motherfuckers was frying balls doing that shit. Whoa. <laughs> they said, if you can't function, you're fucking useless. Get your head out of your ass and focus. That's what it's about. Damn. Yeah. That's crazy. You know, don't, don't just overdo it. It's just like uh, going out to party. You wake up the next day and you can't remember past four o'clock yesterday and you're broke. All your weed is gone and you're lucky you got your phone. What the fuck did you do? Did you have fun? Huh? I want to know okay. about that speed because the only thing I really know about speed is like from Fresh Prince of Bel Air when you know when Carlton was doing speed and he was tripping out. That's like the only thing I really know about. Oh it. yeah, you're good, man. Just just do some energy shots because <laughs> that, yeah, that don't, oh, was so dramatic. You don't need to fuck with nothing else, man. Yeah, I just really like I said I don't do that stuff now. I mean I would drink a little energy drink time to time, but. Yeah, I right. definitely understand, though. Now, I, I have virtually done everything that doesn't take a needle. Oh, wow. You know what? I see y'all in the comments. You know, shout out to everybody in the comments. I'm sorry if I haven't been saying stuff, but I've been trying my best to, you know, show y'all comments and keep up with y'all. So, shout out to everybody because we're going to be getting out of here soon because we at the hour mark. But before we go, it is a couple of more things I do want to ask Mictile Elder Monk real quick because this has Certainly. been a nice one. This has been a good one, man. It's, it's, oh, it's well, one. well, we've done part one growing up, part two being married. So part three to Red Pill. Are you ready? All right, let's go. So after my divorce, I, I just kind of drifted. You know, I, I wasn't really out there getting in trouble, but I didn't really have a focus. Uh I got lucky and my, my current roommate actually offered me my room after one extended truck ride. I guess he could, he could feel my spirit. I I tried to be a nice guy. That's cool. That's cool. And, and then, uh, you know, there I am getting lonely and desperate trying to date women from work, which I know now is a mistake. And Mr. Elite, or some of you know him as Red Pill Elite, gave me my first red pill. Wow. Just a bit over two years ago. And how did that make you feel? Well, for me... Uh, one of the one of the key elements that I saw of what makes taking the red pill hard is the destruction of romantic myth. Mm. Because from the evidence we see, there is really no romance in the soul of a woman for a man. Mm-hmm. They're they're biologically oriented towards their kids, and they have that nurturing spirit. You know. And, and it is said, men love women the way women love children. And women don't seem to love at all. I mean, what, what is this? You know, everybody's going for the bag. Who oh, right, that bag? Uh, yeah, yeah. They yeah. Be bag chasing for the wrong so, reason. Uh, so although, you know, I still have those romantic impulses, they're suppressed for the present. And I believe me, if me from today went back to just before my divorce and said that, look how good you're going to feel and look after you get through the shit, Mm -hmm. I would have said he was a lying mofo. But that's cool, though, you know, and I'm happy that you actually are, you know, in the red pill. So, man. Well, and one thing that really helped is that when you're in the middle of a shit storm, you don't have time to plan. Right. Yeah. You're spending all your time putting out fires. It, it's impossible to even think clearly, much less plan for the future. So. 
uh, if you've taken a peek on my channel and you've seen why there's so much different stuff, it's because I, I was brutally honest with myself. I mean, I, uh, you can see uh, from the beginning to uh, in the exile playlist, the, the one dit that says Renaissance Man. Mm -hmm. I talk about the day that, you know, things made sense in my mind. And it wasn't like, do this, do this, do that. Oh, okay, I'm good. You know, I was listening hardcore uh, all day. I was averaging 12 hours a day listening to Red Pill content. Mm. From from everybody I could think of, I didn't just go to one or two people. It's important. Everybody has a different perspective, and some of them are deliberately trying to mislead you. Yeah, I agree. But it, it was just the one day I could feel it in my head, like charged concentration. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah, this, this is bona fide. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Yeah, man. You know what? I'm just so, everybody know so, uh, so channel every, down below. Panel? I said, yeah, I'm gonna put your channel. Your channel link is gonna go in the description. It's just so oh, everybody thank you, thank you. Yep. And now now I, I give y'all fair warning. I am the forlorn hope. <laughs> I am the tip of the spear. I live on the bleeding edge of red pill philosophy. I mean, you just look at the exile playlist and you can see how me being uh, fulfilled in one playlist and then I change gears and do something completely different. So don't, don't be scared. I ain't scared to show my ass in public. I've absorbed enough black pill that I literally don't give a fuck. Lightning can strike me down right now. Tough. I'll just wake up on the other side. It's like, cool, what's next? Hell yeah. So be ready, y'all. Be ready. Like like you said, be ready. That that's why I run my mouth now. Because mm -hmm. could have been dead more than once. And who knows? I mean, I survived a uh, an encounter with the Grim Reaper. Already, mm -hmm. so I I already know what death is like. So if being dead again don't scare me. Yeah, you know what, Sifu, and I appreciate you, Sifu. Real talk, I appreciate you, my man. Cause we finna get up out of here. This was a wonderful interview, and again, I will put this on the playlist. I will leave your channel link up. But again, thank you for being here, bro. Thank you. Hey, I'm more than just a pretty face, bro. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And, you know, is there anything real quick you want to say before we get out of here? Oh, that, that was pretty much it. If you want to see a man living on the edge and showing his ass in public, check out my channel. Okay. I mean, uh, I am a, a center of absolute calm in a hurricane of adventure and surprise and i'm sharing it all with you because that's what i do now yeah. so, enjoy all right thank all you right. thank you sifu and i will be talking to you again man and i appreciate you being here thank you a no lot no problem all take right. it easy bro all right you too man and i'll talk to you later All right, y'all. Thank y'all for everybody who showed up tonight. I appreciate everybody. Let me look at a few of these comments real quick before I leave. And I'll tell y'all what I'm going to do very soon. So, uh, let me go back to that beat um, that Lonely was talking about. That beat with them flutes. Them flutes was going hard, wasn't they, though? They was. Let me go back to that beat. That beat was sick. Oh, is this it? Okay. Yeah, I think this was a flu beat. Hey, Cannon Lattimore, let me shout out. You know what? Let me shout out everybody. Real quick. 
Shouts out Keenan Lattimore. Shouts out America DeVille. Shouts out Mysteriously Kind. Shouts out Lonely Underscore. Shouts out Mix Out Thread. Shouts out who else? Do we have more? Shouts out Bike Life. Shouts out Hank the Mean Man. Shouts out where I said Mysteriously Kind. Because again, I was trying to keep up with y'all. I was. Shouts out Penny Proud. Um, it was more. Shouts out Wacky World. Shouts out to Donald number one. Let me just shout all y'all out real quick. Cause again, I'm sorry. You know, I will. You know, I be in the conversations. You know, I be. Drea, Drea gonna have to start typing for me to y'all in the comments. She gonna have to start doing that. <laughs> but shouts out Kenan. He said we got mix out thread. Yeah, we got this. Yup, Kenan. Yup. All right, mix out. We in here. Gray in the view. Seafood. Mix out of the month. In the spot. You already know. Hank the mean man. Shouts out Hank. You know he in the spot. I'm back. My phone was just messing up. He said he back though. Hank. Right. L O L. Right. Hank. Hank had to get it together real quick. He had to get it together, y'all. Drea. That was interesting and funny. L O L. Y'all did good. Thank you. Thank you, Drea. He said, damn it all. You had to say, damn it all. Big time, yeah. You going to do an interview with Money Drea? Who? Oh, you want me to interview Drea? Oh, my God. That would be so much. Is that what you're talking about? But seriously, what do you say? I like being invisible and hiding behind the cloak. I want people to have ideas about me and that not be mine. Okay, but seriously. Drea said, I got you. Full true. Black Irish. Yes, we have Black Irish in the spot. That's going to be a good interview to go back and go look through and, you know, rewatch. That'd be nice. They was wild. And in the comments, LOL. I, again, I was trying so hard to keep up. I was trying my best. I swear I was. AD approved. Much love, AD. I'm gonna call you know I call him AD. Mixtail, he Elder Month said thanks so much for showing up. Yeah, yeah. Again, much love to all y'all. You already know it's much love to everybody in these comments. You know, people think they got me figured out. I keep it strictly surface level. That's my seriously kind. You know he gonna be upload. I know you gonna upload some new stuff. Post the wedding pics, bro. Oh my gosh. Uh y'all funny. You funny. You funny, AD. You're funny. Now let me go back and hit them flutes up and then we out of here, okay? I ain't even say what the hell I was gonna do. But just know I'm gonna get some stuff together. And I'm gonna try to make some regular videos and I'm gonna try to, you know, get some more interviews. Just know that. I'm gonna still do my late night live streams. You know, that shit cool. But just know I'm looking more to that right now at the moment. So that's basically my future plans. And much love to y'all. And you know I holla at y'all later. Much love, Bike Life. I see you, Bike Life. We're gonna just zone out to this music and I'm gonna holla at y'all later, okay?
Thank you.